What's Hello? up? Can you hear me? Yeah, what's up? Nothing much. Um, so I just want to talk about the whole idea of like baptism and that it isn't needed for salvation. Uh could I could I ask you, would you equate the forgiveness of sins with salvation? Like if you're forgiven, you're saved? No. So you can be saved while being unforgiven? No, it'd be the opposite. You asked me the opposite. So if you're forgiven, you're saved? Yeah, I don't believe in, I don't believe that's necessarily the case, no. Because even though people can be forgiven, if they don't accept the salvation, then sure, I mean, you can't, I'd say this, I'd say this. If you have self, if you accept the salvation of Jesus Christ, then your sins are forgiven because you're allowing them. Like you're allowing and accepting the fact that Jesus did die on the cross for your sins. Um, without that, then I guess if you don't acknowledge the salvation, then you can't really be forgiven in the first place, if that makes sense. But does that clarify my, at least my view? Mm, so you do believe that if somebody believes in Jesus, they'll be forgiven, which makes them saved? It's the, yeah, it's the belief and it's the belief and trust in Jesus that saves them and allows their sins to be forgiven. Yes. But do you believe a person can be forgiven and not be saved? Depends on whether they are, have accepted Christ or not. The if they haven't Christ, accepted Christ, Christ the how would they be? From. But if they haven't accepted Christ, how could they be forgiven? Because I mean, it's not could, a I mean, I guess we could. I, I guess I could argue that point, considering the fact that pre-cardation of Christ, um, you had the Levitical laws and you had the Israelites who were um, forgiven of their sins via um, sin uh, sacrifice. So. Right, but in light of the fact that Jesus's blood would be shed. Huh. Because they were forgiven. It's like a God knew that the sacrifice would be made. It's like a credit card. You don't have the money up front to pay for it, but you get to enjoy the blessing of what you of the of what is purchased without it actually being paid off yet. So those who died before Jesus was born were able to enjoy the benefits of forgiveness, even though the price wasn't paid yet because the price would be paid. So they were still forgiven. Their faith in God is what allowed them to be forgiven. Without faith in God, you can't be forgiven of the one that's forgiving in the first place. Right. I would agree with that, that, yeah, they were saved by faith. But the question, I'm just kind of confused because this is what will lead to the next point is that because we have to have, establish a fact about forgiveness and salvation. And it appears that what you well, believe the question was about baptism. So I'm, I'm kind of right. But I would connect baptism to forgiveness, which if you think that you can be forgiven, and not saved, then our discussion won't go anywhere. Well, there's baptism of the Holy Spirit, and there's also baptism via water. And the baptism of water was the baptism of repentance. So, well, we could we could get to that, but first, I'd like to establish. So, you believe that somebody can be forgiven and not be saved? That that typically doesn't make any sense because again, the faith in Jesus allows for one to be saved and forgiven. It's about accepting what has already been um, given to you. Okay. It's so like we someone has a gift. If I have someone has a gift and I don't take it and I just leave it right there at my doorstep, I haven't received it, so I can't possibly know what is actually in store for me. So we both agree that a person, if they want to be saved, they have to be forgiven. If they want to be saved, they have to be forgiven. Would you agree with that? I would. I, I guess that can. I feel like the wording is important, so I I would still argue just if a, a person has to be saved in order to be forgiven, if that makes sense. I think that's the same. I feel like it's the same thing, but I just feel like I feel like there might be one difference. It's just being how can someone be forgiven if they haven't been saved yet? Right. That's the point that I'm making is because you said baptism is not for. But no, I said baptism isn't needed for salvation. Salvation comes that's in the same, Yeah, that's, that's the same thing. Baptism is not for salvation. Baptism is not no, needed for salvation. No, that's not what I'm saying. Like you can, so here's the thing. So you, you can be baptized and still not have the salvation of Christ. Does that clarify what I'm saying? Well, so, okay. What about this then? Acts 2.38 says water baptism is in order to receive the forgiveness of sins. Repentance, yeah, correct. No, baptism. I... You said forgiveness of sins. In yeah, Acts, Acts 2.38. That's what, that's what water baptism is for. Yeah, for the forgiveness of sins. Water baptism is for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. 
Correct. So. Right, but you just said it's not for salvation, or it's not needed for salvation, but yeah, it so is that's needed. forgiveness of sins. That's why. That's why when you asked me the question, I said you have to be saved in order to be forgiven. If you're not saved, how could you possibly be forgiven? So that's why so I said you, you can be, be baptized and still not be saved. So you have to be baptized to receive forgiveness, but you don't have to be baptized to receive salvation. Correct, and I can give you an I can give you a very very um, broad um, reason as to why. So do you know you you remember Barnabas that was on the cross, right? Or Barabbas, sorry, not Barnabas, Barabbas that was on the cross right next to Jesus on Calvary, right? Barabbas was Barabbas released. Correct, but he was on the cross right next to him. I mean, they spoke next to each other. If he was released, how was he on the cross? He got he was taken down. That's pretty simple. He was nailed to the cross and they took Barabbas down from the cross. I mean, yeah. No, that didn't happen. Are you sure? Yeah, there was the trial where Jesus and they released one prisoner as was a custom and they released Barabbas, but he was never mm -hmm. crucified. Hold up, hold up. Are you talking about the thief on the cross? I could be wrong. But either way, before, uh, you could look at that after, but what's your- Yeah, let me make sure I look at it because I could be wrong. But hold on, yeah, go ahead. But you're saying that baptism is in order to receive forgiveness, but not in order to receive salvation. But then I thought we both agreed that if you're forgiven, that's how you receive salvation. Or if you're saved, right? It's the same thing. That's what you said a minute ago. You said it's no, the I same thing. I don't believe it's the same thing. That's why when you asked me the question, I ended up saying that in order to be, I said you would have to be saved first in order to receive. So like, so like you have, that is salvation comes before. Like, I'm not salvation saying that baptizing, I'm not saying baptizing is meaningless, but I'm saying baptizing will not save you. So the blood of Jesus was shed for forgiveness. So you're saying that a person can be saved without the blood of Jesus? I mean, sure. Yeah. You believe, wait, wait, wait. You believe a person could be saved without the blood of Jesus? Well, if you think about the fact that Moses is, is in heaven as of right now, how in the world was he saved without the, current, the blood sacrifice of Christ? Because it's like a credit card. It was still through the blood of Jesus that anybody has ever been saved or ever will be saved. It's it was like faith. a credit card. That's though, the how, that's how Moses was able. It was through Moses' faith in God. That's what so it you was. Don't, you don't think the blood of Jesus had anything to do with Moses being forgiven? No, I, I think it was definitely, I mean, obviously, it's. I mean, you could say it's timeless, but if you really do think about it, I mean, is there a place... And like that's the thing you can show me if there is because I could like I could be wrong. But is there a place in scripture where it says that that sacrifice covered Moses? Yeah, there's uh, someone. Someone might be able to help me with the chat in the chat. Um, but it's in the book of Hebrews, and it says that Jesus is bloodshed. It said paid for the redemption as of those who transgressed under the first covenant. And Moses was under the first covenant. He's the one who gave the first covenant. Someone in chat would be able to help us with that because okay, i'm on my you, phone yeah if you give me the verse because like i said i could be wrong but if you could give me the verse that'd be good my only thing is it's just i just wonder why whenever um whenever the thief was on the cross that he said like i guarantee you will be coming, going to paradise or you'll be in paradise with me mm -hmm. just think that's interesting i'm waiting for someone in the chat to pull up hebrews but yeah, so someone you, said Acts. Oh wait, I don't know if they're responding to you or not. No, someone that's said, not. No, that's not anything. Okay, wait. Someone said Hebrews three. Hold on one second. I'm actually reading Hebrews right now. So hold on. Hebrews three. No, I don't think it's Hebrews three. Like I said, I'm not saying you're wrong. I genuinely am curious because I'm just saying, like, I I mean, I, I really don't know, so. I mean, I just, I really do believe it's faith at the end of the day. I'm not saying that Jesus' blood. It's Hebrews, it's Hebrews 9.15. It's Hebrews 9.15. Hebrews, Hebrews 9.15 or Hebrews 9.22? Because someone Hebrews put 9.15. Okay, let me see. Mm 
Okay, let's see. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, wait, let me see, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force of as a for is of force after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator is still alive. Okay. Right, but his Good blood was shed to forgive those who it says transgress. It's people saying this is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoyed unto you. Moreover, so I'm just continuing to read. Hold on one second, because I actually have not read this. No, all things are by the law of perjured blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heaven should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves was better sacrifices than this. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with Well, hey, I have other people waiting to join, but um, I don't mean to cut you off or anything. Well, but, no, you're good. You know, so, so this is, here, I'll follow you, and maybe you could follow me back, yeah, but... Yeah. Um, I, I would equate the forgiveness of sins with salvation, that if a person's forgiven, they're saved. And if they're saved, that would mean they're forgiven. But I would like to maybe, because I'll be live again tomorrow night around 9, if you wanted to join back, I'd like to hear your thoughts on um, Acts 2.38. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And I appreciate you, too, for giving me scripture to read. I'm definitely going to read into this. Okay, yeah, and then maybe come back tomorrow. Well, you have a nice night. Thank you again. All right, thank you. Have a good one. You too. Bye.